Our back room area has been pretty disorganized for a long time. And when I say a long time, years. Linda has been retired now since June of last year. And I want to keep, this area right here is one of the most fascinating and popular areas to look at when you come in here. Good, Good job, she has her hand back on. Trip, Trip to, to grandma. grandma. Isn't that goofy? <gasps> I, love I love this. A little blush, a little lip, and a little eye on me makes me look like a, like, from death to the runway. I think that's exaggerated, <laughs> but uh, maybe not death, you know? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, Christopher, if you want to start, this if you want to keep- Just kidding. Hi, welcome back to the channel. So this video is entitled, Something's Gotta Change because something's gotta change. <laughs> this is an exciting time for us, but we have a lot of organizing and things to do, and I want to show you what's going on. This is a vlog. I don't know how long we are gonna be vlogging or how long this is going to take. We will probably be filming over a course of, I don't know. I'm starting to film right now on a Monday. We just finished our two subscription boxes that we do for the month and we have an entire week where it's like, what are we gonna do this week? And we usually film content and organize and things, but our back room area has been pretty disorganized for a long time. And when I say a long time, years, and it's been growing and growing and growing. None of it's our fault because we have been so busy and we have been in a season and a, and a time of change and transition and it's a small team and we can only do so much at once. But here's what struck a nerve in me. Somebody, just a, a well-meaning person, it meant no offense at all, but they said we needed to move and get a bigger shop for what we're doing here. And I was like, first of all, no, because our, the, I thought to myself, is this what it looks like? And I don't worry about what it looks like, but here's what I thought to myself. We have so much room here, so much room but a lot of it is at this point mismanaged because of the different things that we have transitioned and changed into. And I thought to myself, we have so much room here. No, we don't need to move to a bigger shop. We need to organize and make the space that we have more usable. So we're gonna go in the back, keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times because it's gonna be a bumpy ride. This is gonna be fun and exciting, hopefully for you to watch. I always like renovation and, and organization type videos, and you're gonna be in the shop with us as we do this. It's gonna be a big project. We're ready to work. We're in our work clothes, which we are in a lot of the time, but let's just go back so you can see what I'm talking about here. All right, so this first room, of course, is going to be, I'm not sure what it's going to be. Christopher's helping us organize too and figure out what we're gonna do. But what we got going on is a lot of things. And when I say things, we can't just throw it all in the dumpster, which we would never do. But you know what I'm saying? When you do a big clean out, especially those videos that are on YouTube where they do like big things, it, it might look like a hoard at this point, but a lot of that stuff is trash. This stuff is not trash. It has to be organized and thoughtfully put into spaces and stored until we come up with what we're gonna do with it next. Linda has been retired now since June of last year. And I want to keep, this area right here is one of the most fascinating and popular areas to look at when you come in here. But the truth is we have not used it basically since she left. And what we are doing is a lot of the things that we are doing, which we're making do on countertops and in little spaces. But this is going to stay. We're going to make it look absolutely beautiful. And I still have hopes that I am going to meet an antique restorer, antique doll person that sews and does wonderful things that as would like to be a good fit for us and, and join our team for a couple of days a week. But what really churns the wheel for us is not this. It is what we do over here and we need more space to do it. So this needs to be better organized because we're not even doing ourselves or the antique industry any services by having the pile like this. I want it to look better. I want it to look better for you, for us. So when we walk through the store, we just feel better. There's so much we have to deal with. I'm gonna have a an estate sale type thing, hopefully this summer, but for now, we have to be able to just move and to, and to work. You know what it's like when you just don't have room to work and live? And we're here all day, every day, so we need it to work. So this is one of the big spots right here that we are excited to figure out. Underneath this is a desk. Underneath this is a desk. Hard to believe, but it's true. 
and we just walk and we tell people not to trip. And I don't want to live like that anymore. I don't, I don't want to live like this. We have a lot of wonderful things, wonderful things, which we're going to get to good homes and to good places. And it needs to thoughtfully be done. But for right now, we're also running a business where we do what we do and there's no space to do it. So wish us luck because we're going to dive in and do this. It's not going to be that big of a deal. I'm excited about it. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And because we've got an entire week right now where we're thinking about what to do, this is what we're going to do. So periodically, I'm going to flip on the camera and you're going to join us and see the progress and what's going on. So thank you, Paul, for getting ready. Paul has started us with some boxes because we're going to be organizing and he's going to be our, our muscle for a lot of this to help us get it all organized and figure out what we're going to do. I mean, look at this. This is normal. Again, this is not abnormal. This is normal, especially for a doll shop like us and any, any doll collector space. But I can't, I can't live like this no more. We're going to change it. We're going to change it and it's going to be better. So here we go. <laughs> Paul's like getting ready. He's doing his stretches. Mm -hmm. All right, are you ready to dive in, Paul? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're a couple hours into our project, and again, you might be wondering, what are we doing with everything? Well, for the most part, we're organizing it and putting it in storage. The only time we've thrown anything away is if it was actual literal trash, which you wouldn't believe what we have found that's like, what is, what is this doing here? Why is this here? Not a ton, but Sometimes I wish I, when I open it up to make it easier, I just kind of wish it was. But no, it's all really important, great, great stuff. So we're working really hard on it, but it does get overwhelming where I've opened up a few drawers and just closed them and then been like, Rachel, you can't do that. This is how we got here. We have to make this usable and functional for us. So anyway, we see the bottom of the desk. Thank God we have a lot of storage. One of the things we've been doing is Christopher has been merchandising some of our wonderful antique dolls, which I'll show you some of that up front and you can see what it looks like. They look so good. But anyway, just a quick check in. This is still Monday, still day one. And it's hard to decide what we need. I wish I could be selling all this as I'm organizing it because I know a lot of you that are antique collectors and restorers would like to be buying it, but I can't do that. Almost all of you do not live in Colorado and it needs to be thoughtfully done. But I wish that I, ca I can't keep sitting here wishing and then not having anything happen. So I'm saying this so I can hear it myself. Let's let's keep going. So anyway, it's looking pretty good, though. We can see the desks. Thanks a lot, Paul. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, friends. Welcome back. We're on day two of our extreme makeover. It's not it's not that extreme, but. It was getting to the point and you saw in the beginning of the video that it was it was just becoming very chaotic and as doll people know this happens very easily and it can happen very quickly when you are constantly bringing in new things and not finishing projects and you've got a lot of stuff going on which is at our shop sometimes tons of things come in with no notice or we don't by the end of the day, sometimes a bunch of stuff will come in and we didn't plan on it in the beginning of the day. And we are a very small team that I am so incredibly proud of. It is myself, Paul, and Christopher, and we do so much. But after Linda retired and Stanley retired, both in the same two weeks for totally different reasons, the timing just worked out for Linda because she was selling her house. And, and with Stanley, it was something he was wanting to do for a long time and he just decided to take the plunge. Things changed around here. And I am very proud of us for ebbing and flowing and doing different things to, to stabilize. But right now, like I talked about before in our first clip, I am very excited to get it so it's not so chaotic around here and we can manage the space that we have. So sometimes I get feedback of like, are you leaving the antique business completely? Are you doing this or you're doing that? I'm not making any announcements for anything. What we're doing is enjoying doll collecting and as a leader for our company and our business, I have to point us in a direction that is, is best for us. And what we can manage and what we can accomplish is what we're doing right now. We have way too much stuff. Even with Linda here, at one time we had a staff of eight people, if you can believe it. Several people working in sewing, one person dedicated just to taking photos, just photos. Two people dedicated to only writing descriptions of the antique dolls. It, it was amazing at one point, but that model is no longer sustainable for us. But what is sustainable for us is having a doll shop and always loving dolls, 
all kinds of dolls and doing everything that we can. And I am really proud of us for doing that. So this is this is a behind the scenes of what's really happening here. It's beautiful. It's 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 cool. It's it's one of the biggest projects of my life, but I keep finding and unearthing things that I'm like, this is amazing to see. This is cool to look at. So I just had one of those moments where I had this Monica Studios. If you're familiar with the doll, the Monica dolls are very cool. And I found this book that had pictures of them and the original price list of these dolls. I'm gonna show it to you. Let me grab it. Christopher's over here working the antique department. Hello. Nice change from your usual. I mean, I, I added a, another hat to the list. Yeah, I love it. This is very fun. Another hat to the list. So Christopher, uh, what did you do? to the outfit. I, you clean the body. I cleaned the whole body. The outfit I sort of just like lint rolled. I didn't yeah. do anything to it. It's wool so I don't right. want to like do much. Yeah. But she looks better. Yeah she does. I, I mean the whole face is a different color. I think that's the second or third that I cleaned up already today and it makes such a difference. This is um it, it's very it's gratifying because you get such a transformation so rapidly. Yeah. So much of what we do is also like small little bits over time. That's like an instant like ta-da, like it feels like a huge difference right away. Yeah, it is. And what Linda would do, and and refer to the videos on our channel because they're priceless. What Linda would do sometimes is take a doll, she would get 10, she would get 10 dolls cleaned in a day and press their clothes, sometimes wash them if they needed it, but that's all she would do. She would clean them, wash and press the clothes, restring them, which we need to learn how to do ourselves. I've watched Linda do it a million times and I could actually figure it out if I pulled up one of our YouTube videos. So we're just gonna take a, a day and to relearn all that. But we are very capable, strong people. And I have been doing this my entire life. I learned so much from our mother, Paula's filming, and we got this, we got this. But but what we're trying to do is also make it manageable. And 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 I know, and I don't owe anyone any apologies, but sometimes I get I get a little like pushback of like, what, what are you doing? But there's a lot of layers to what we are doing and there's a lot of reasons. And so the fact that we are even here at all, is just incredible. But look at this, Monica Doll Studios. I love this. It has all the different, it has the two sizes, 17 and 20, and then the different types of dolls and their prices. So actually this was, this was expensive. 1050, 1150 for the time. But look at how beautiful, oh. look at, look at the 20 inch Loretta. I love the. Isn't this um, great? There's a there's a visiting grandma or like trip to grandma outfit, which I think is so cute. Trip to grandma. Also, the yeah, there's a couple in here. I love the debutante. I think is beautiful with the like the look at that rose around the neck. That's so beautiful. There's some. I, I love, love the, the names that they chose for these, but they they're really gorgeous outfits. And the doll, like I know, her face is breathtaking. They I are wonderful. Those lips. This is party a dress. Oh, I love that. They're they're both very sweet. I think the silhouette of that is just gorgeous. Trip to, to grandma. grandma. Isn't that goofy? I love, I love this. Yeah, I know that little hat. We need the, to do a vest. trip to grandma subscription box. So wouldn't that be everything? That would be fun. I love this. Grand Gala. Supreme. This is amazing. We're just going to give you a little ASMR where Christopher <laughs> is brushing doll hair and we're looking at doll pictures. First school day. Yeah, I know. How cute. Rosebud. Rosebud. I haven't seen that one. That's sweet. We have one Monica doll in our shop and we absolutely adore her. Love that one too. That, that giant bow. Birthday party. We love bows here. We do a lot of bows. Rich peasant bride. Isn't oh my that gosh. The description of that. Rich peasant she's a, bride. She's a peasant with money. She's I a peasant that. with money. That's, that's all of us. We're just peasants with money. With any luck. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Stella. So I knew you guys would love to see this. Look at the bridesmaid. Oh, that fabric is so pretty. With the gold sheen. I know. I was thinking, I wonder if it's, if it's silver or gold. I see it as gold, even though it's black and white, but I don't know. Sylvia. Phyllis. This is wonderful. This is going to go in our, we need to, we're, we're building like, we're trying to figure it out, but we're trying to have a spot that would be really nice for coffee. And this would be a great coffee table oh book. Oh my God, I can't Wouldn't it? a better coffee table book. That's an amazing idea for that. Yeah. Wouldn't you just like to sit down in a beautiful doll shop, if have I a cup have of coffee. Like, look at this. <laughs> like a 50 first dates scenario where I like wake up and don't know who I am. I want to start my day every day with this book. This one? Yeah. 
I'm gonna wake up every day with a cup of coffee and start with this book. I don't need to know who I am. I wanna know who Monica is. That's amazing. Yeah, Monica Dolls of Hollywood. Yeah. This is our coffee table book. I love this. So this is fun. Here's a couple of the other things. So we're kind of dividing it out. As you can see, this looks a lot better. We cleared out a lot of things. Again, a lot of it is being, it will be sold later this year in our estate sale. We're gonna have like an estate sale. In between our subscriptions, we have like a two month lull where we really focus on antiques. And we focus on antiques a lot, but it's not our primary income driver. And we have some wonderful gifts and, and beautiful things here that I can't wait to just put out at the store. Most of it is just in our museum, but look at these tiny little china heads. Look how sweet they are. And their little outfits. These are amazing. We're finding so many wonderful, amazing things. A lot of it that I knew already knew was here, but I haven't seen it in a really long time. Isn't that great? The stuff we're also putting in our estate sale is wonderful too. We just we just have too much of it. This was this was fun. I actually showed this in a video years ago, but this is where a little girl or a little boy was learning how to sew, and they and they learn first on these pieces of tissue. Look at that. This is this child was very good and they're even signed. And I think there were some dates on them too. I don't know what we're going to do with these things, but we're trying to create kind of a museum experience where we have changing exhibits hopefully and just different different things. Most almost all of our outreach and interaction is all over the internet with you. And so we want it to look different and cool and exciting in different videos. So the different backgrounds and stuff like that's going to be wonderful when we have time in between doing all of the rest that we do, which is fashion merchandising, dreaming up subscription scenarios, shipping. A lot of our time is shipping thanks to you. So thank you very much. But we're going to dive back in. Paul's doing a good job showing everything. This is going to be hopefully cleared off for the most part today. You can't work like this. We were just setting different things down and then Linda left and more things got set down, but you can't work like this. So we're making it so that we can work and we're excited about that. So I'll bring you in on the next development. All right, we're back in action. So warning, by the time this airs, these things will already be in storage. So I appreciate so much the intentions of, hey, what's the price on this? What's the price on that? But we're not in a position to be able to sell things because if somebody asks me a price, then we have to give them measurements and, and extra photos and all that stuff. And yes, I'm open to that, but not right now. Right now we're trying to put things in storage and get them organized so that we can thoughtfully sell them later. And so to now, now's not the time. So I am showing this to you, but don't let it drive you crazy because it's already in storage, okay? But this is a little bit of our thought process. So this is a, a brew. We get a lot of comments on her, but I actually bought her not knowing that the facial restoration, and we're gonna say restoration loosely, was so poorly done. It's not terrible on the video, but it's, it's not so great. But she does have a wonderful body. So we need to get her somewhere actually probably a little bit safer than this, which we are going to do. Don't worry. I l actually laid her down on the table so she wouldn't fall over, but it's hard to see, but you can see that she's had a, a pretty, pretty bad restoration on the right side of her face. This Perian we're just going to clean and actually put out. She's really, really cute, but a lot of this stuff is just going to be boxed up and put for our sale our estate sale. This is a baby Stuart head that we've had forever. So some of these things we're, we're also just gonna keep because selling them doesn't, and, it, and it's had restoration right there on the side of the bonnet you can see. Selling them doesn't necessarily bring us much much money and they I have memories of a lot of these things we've had that in our cupboard for decades so a lot of them I'm just not not in a big hurry to sell this one we are going to repair her arm which I'm going to show Christopher what to do on that and we're going to do that so that could probably be its own little video where we kind of bumble through that which it'll be fine this is a a pretty portrait jumeau she's really pretty and then we have some fake fake reproduction and I'm using the word fake and not artist reproduction because these ones were made to defraud they were made to trick people into thinking they were antique dolls and they're not so we actually keep these as good teaching materials yeah we, we're gonna we're gonna do a case with some fun things Paul this can actually be Paul's my trusty right hand man over here hey Paul hi Hey, so that that can we can we're gonna put those out we can put those out for sale so that's good paul's been helping a lot christopher's been working and we've been doing lots of stuff finding lots of stuff what is this this is a book of trims 
different trims and different things. And I don't know why this head is here. He can actually probably go to the estate sale. He's kind of interesting in the background. See, some of these have notes. Look at this. This one has a note. Excuse me, Mr. Head. Okay. This is Sally's handwriting. It says, buy low, keep original, baby and clothes, needs 10 inch circumference head. So guessing the head is too small for the body. It doesn't look too bad. But notes are super helpful. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of notes on these things. Just caked in dust. Eventually, we I will sell a lot of the doll repair things to hopefully another doll repair person. And we're going to keep a lot of it, but we have so much of it. All of these drawers are full of shoes. And when people ask me about shoes, it's it's the problem is is like stopping, looking through them all, measuring them, and then taking all the time to send all of these measurements to the person and then and then they usually don't buy them or it's not the right fit or whatever. And then I just spent like an hour doing that. So that's why I can't. That's why I can't. So we're trying to get to the point where we can do more of that kind of thing. But right now it's just not possible. And I don't, I, everyone has been so supportive and so wonderful. And I want to thank you so much for being with us through all the ebbs and flows of what we're doing in this in this doll shop. This is wild. This is this is a big undertaking that we have been undertaking for many years. And I'm just really proud that we're still here doing it. So this is a lot of Tonner inventory that we are going to be selling at the Super Show that we need to get somewhere else. But we can't we can't walk through here. It's it's all good stuff, but we need to store it and sell it eventually because we just can't we can't even walk. And it's my fault, but it just happens. It happens. So anyway, we will be back with our next segment. Look at this, tiny crocheted clothes. I mean, it's just amazing. Medium clothes, medium clothes. It's amazing, but we don't have Linda here working a few days a week to restore the antique dolls. And then even when she did restore them, it sounds like I'm coming up with excuse after excuse, but it is hard for me to get stuff listed and to photograph and to list it online and to describe it and all that stuff. And that's why it never really got done. Our cases are beautiful. They are so beautiful. But there will be a time when we can get more online because we want to so badly, but we have we can only do what we can do. So and we're doing a lot, which I'm very, very proud of us. So thank you very much, Paul, for all of your help in shipping and all of the all of the help carrying and doing all this stuff. So okay, on our next segment, this will hopefully be cleaned off a little bit. I'm not cleaning off everything. I'm leaving some things because again, we want to fix her arm and put her out. She's wonderful. She has a hairline on her face that goes all the way over her eye ridge and nose, but she's wonderful. And these dolls with damage, I just absolutely love because it's a way you can enjoy them without having to worry about spending so much money. It costs money to do all of this and to collect all of this, but that's part of the fun. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. It's been such a work day. I have my Cliff Bar here in my little pouch and I've been chugging water to keep me hydrated. Here's what's going on. These, this is being donated to the thrift store. This is all boxes of things. This is all going to be in our estate sale. This is clothes that I'm going to be eventually selling that we're gonna just store for now. This is a teddy bear repair stuffing. This is stuff we're gonna store. These are dolls for our estate sale. But the reason why I have this video is because taking you behind the scenes, we're going off-roading. Off-roading outside, giving you the inside scoop. So here is our semi-trailer. We have two semi-trailers. Here is semi number one. Mom bought these. Stanley used to do a lot of furniture repair out here. Oh look, here's some very rare foamy dolls. But okay, we're gonna take a deep dive. These are Grace subscription boxes. These are Elowen subscription boxes. There is a vintage Betsy McCall Playpal. Uh, Playpal parts for sure. Christmas decorations, old signs from mom's first iteration of the shop. And then this is all stuff that we have in storage already. Yep, it all has to be, it all has to be gone through. I put stuff out here and Forget about a lot of it, just because we start, we keep on moving in the shop. This, I want to make a YouTube video, probably with Alton or, or something, but these are a lot of like 
These are all Chatty Cathy dolls. I think there's like a hundred of them. And there's big boxes of Cabbage Patch dolls. Dolls that we just can't really take the time to be investing a ton of money into and time into because by the time we sell them, it, our, our operating costs, you guys, I'm not gonna break it down or anything, but it's hundreds of dollars a day. And so when we spend the day on something, it has to be fruitful for us financially. I do, I do a lot of things here that are kind of a, a pet project or a passion project. A lot of our videos and stuff that we're filming is passion, but it's also, it's also helping us because it's helping you because we're talking to each other, but it's a lot. And so that's why we can't do, that's why we do what we do and we don't do what we don't do. But anyway, this is our wonderful semi-trailer. Sometimes I think about what it would be like to live in here. I don't know. I, I think about weird stuff like that. Do you ever think about weird stuff, Paul? Once in a while. Yeah, just, do you ever think about just random stuff? I think about what would it be like if I just had a little space heater and I lived in this semi-trailer? It's actually quite cozy. It is. This could make a nice house. Look at this. There's a lot of room in here. I bet a, I bet a lot of people live in them. We've never had a leak. It does get quite cold in the winter, but we could just string a little, just string a little space heater out here. And not that I would do that. Isn't that weird? I have an entire home that's very cozy that I love very much, but I still think about what it would be like if I lived in our semi. Random, right? But anyway, so we're gonna bring out a lot of the boxes and things that are gonna be for our summer project and put them out here to make room in our shop. So here we go. Yeah, finding lots of wonderful treasures for sure. All right, I'm actually out of breath because hauling all these boxes and putting them in where they need to go is in and out of trailers is a lot. It's a lot of work. We're getting my cardio. These right here are souvenirs for Tonner Fest. Look at this. Can you imagine what is in these boxes? It is so good, by the way. We are going to have souvenirs for the people who join us at Tonner Fest in person. And then we're also, the reason why there's so many of them is because we're going to have a souvenir pack, the same souvenir pack that we're offering to our in-person attendees online. So the swag bag that everyone got when they attended Tonner Fest, you can actually buy this year online. And it is good, you guys. It is, it is in, how many boxes? There's like 37 boxes. 30, 30 boxes. Crazy. So now we're going to get all these in the trailer and trailers, but you want to see something crazy? Speaking of, let me show you round two of the trailers. Let's walk together. Okay, so I showed you our first trailer. Here's the second trailer. Yep, there's two of them and it's also full. So this is stuff that, again, I think of it as kind of like a savings account. We have so much to do, no matter what happened, there is enough to keep us as long as the doll industry stays strong, which it is strong, no matter what anybody tells you, the doll industry is doing great. Theriot's auction just had their highest grossing auction of all time. It was Rosalie Wilde's collection, which of course, amazing thing. So no surprise there. There's so much interest all the time. So anytime anyone says like, oh, it's dried up, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's not. I just can't stay on top of everything. A lot of the prices have gone down on a lot of the common type dolls, the ones that you see a lot. But prices ebb and flow. Things go up and down. You buy for less, you sell for less, whatever. But the interest is there. And I think and hope that through a lot of my content and videos, I can help revive and invigorate interest maybe inside of you. If you, if you were stagnant for a while and you see my content, my gosh, we put out like two, sometimes three videos a week at minimum, about one a week at minimum. And I know a lot of you have said that. So if that's true, let me know. I love hearing that. It's the wind beneath my wings. But yeah, we store a lot of things in here. There's one of my mom's big teddies. This bassinet's wonderful. We've got a lot of things. Our shop is absolutely massive, but there's even more. There's more. Look at this. I forgot about this. This is pretty. Hi, everybody. We're on a GoPro. The quality isn't quite as good as our big powerful camera but this thing is super light and I can just walk around with it and and it's very stable so anyway we're gonna bring a bunch more boxes we're gonna bring all those souvenir boxes into the first trailer and then into this one but this one we can walk through we're not gonna be able to walk through it so well after we do that but we'll be clearing those out Tonner Fest and this big estate sale that we're having are gonna happen over the summer so thanks for joining me this is a very unexpected but fun fun video vlog bringing you along with me on it, what it would be like if you were here. 
We could use an extra hand, and I know if you were here, you'd be glad to help us with that. But we're doing it, we're doing it, and it's been good. So, all right, see you in a minute. So just, we're doing the heavy lifting out here, and Christopher's also doing some heavy lifting because he's got a big mama jama. Oh my gosh, she looks so much better. Right? Have you been having fun working in the antique department? This is great, I wanna do way more of this. I'm glad that we've sort of unearthed some gems that otherwise would have just been sitting here for a little while. Yeah. They needed attention anyway, and it was just a really good excuse maybe or reason to sort of break them out. Yeah. And I don't know, I feel like I'm at a point now with my like experience in the shop that I can do something like this more intuitively than I would have like six months ago. Yeah. So like, I don't feel, you know, out uh, of place. seasoned either, right. but it's certainly, it, it's much more intuitive and much more more organic so it's not maybe what i'm trying to say is like it's not as intimidating as i you know would have felt about it a little while ago and i'm excited to like i don't know i always learn something new like every day i'm learning something new and i don't know i enjoy that so this has been this has been very fun for about a dozen reasons but it's also great because my other main job is like staging and doing visual merchandising and whatever being able to see something start to finish for like you know, bare bones, nothing, no hair, you know, hardly, you know, like nude, loose, whatever. And then assembling that and then assembling a case where everything in it started that way. It's just, I don't know, it's very exciting. It's very fulfilling. Christopher, we didn't get a before and after. Well, there's an after, but there's not a before, but he took a doll and just bumped up the clothes, put a wig on her, cleaned her, and she looked like Christmas morning. And that's one of the things yeah. that Linda would do. And it was so nice. You give the dolls just such a, a, a new life. And so do are we professional repair people? I, I know a decent amount just from growing up in this and filming Linda, like I can guide, but I'm, I'm not a professional repair person. And neither is Christopher, but we're, we're learning and we're trying. And that's the most important thing is to just learn and to try and to do it because you might have something and talent inside of you that you didn't know that you had that just awakens when you try, when you sit down at a piano or when you play a flute or you start cleaning a doll. If, as long as you have them in a safe place, you guys, try it. It's it's fine. They're not going to cry. They're not going to walk away. Like, if anything, you're just going to do well. So you can always visit some of our past videos. But also, I'm excited to just learn right along with Christopher and to, to figure it out together and to share it with you as much as we can and hopefully help inspire you and help you learn too. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a fun... It, it already has been quite an adventure, but she's looking great. Yeah, it's we're we're undergoing a real transformation in the shop because not only is this all changing, but we're also staging for other things that are on our regular roster schedule, you know, whatever. Yeah. So in like a week and a half, everything's going to look different. And that's very exciting. It's, it's a lot yeah. of work to get there. But this is also a really exciting thing to sort of pace myself with on the way to that destination. Yeah, and and it's really great because after our, we have our Elowin box and then right after Elowin goes straight into Grace and then after Grace, there's like a week where we're like, what do we do? And so we get to work on antique stuff. So that's that's fun. We're finally in a rhythm where I can where I can count on what's what's happening and we can plan for things. So it's really good. It's keeping the whole team busy and we're just staying really, really busy. But getting some of these dolls. Oh, did you fix her hand? Yeah. You did? I don't think it's very well done. It's good. You think so? Yes. I think the patch is a little generous. But... Well, you could you could trim a couple of these edges, but she's you guys. <laughs> I was gonna film this, but it, it, we've done it a million times with Linda. But you take kid leather and you take your amazing glue and you just patch it. That's how it's done. It looks great. Good. Good job. She has her hand back on. Thanks. And she's got her clothes put together. We have a beautiful portrait Jamo up front too that needs a little bath because. This sister, she looks like a different ethnicity after you clean her up. I mean, it's crazy. They look so different when they're clean. Wow, her outfit's pretty great. Yeah, to be in that shape too is impressive. Yeah, the outfit of the one up front's wonderful. She's not quite as old as the other one. The other one's like 120 years old. Yes, so she's one's, newer. This one's not quite as old, but it's still very exciting. It is. Yeah. So this girl, she's got wonderful lashes. This is a 301 SFBJ marked Tetshima that was during the time when all the companies were kind of banding together, but she doesn't need a whole lot. She's got such a sweet face. Yeah, I'm just going to give her a little little curl and maybe a nice new bonnet. I don't, I mean, the dress is cute. Maybe we'll I like the blue. leave yeah. that alone. It's a nice antique. Yeah. She's got antique undergarments. 
really sweet face. And we're 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 gonna clean the floors. I'm excited about that. But the the drawers have been curated by Linda, and it's really they don't need any changes. Basically, what you need for doll repair and conservation. So. Yeah. I'm excited for the touch-ups that you're going to be doing on Barbie. Christopher's going to be, you got, you, you all saw the Farrah Fawcett makeover. The makeup was amazing. Oh, thank you. Amazing. <clears throat> thank you. And so when we need to do, like, we have a midge, Christopher was like, she ain't going nowhere with her, her face. Not was, in her career. She doesn't have a face. Yeah. And just touching her up, of course, we list them as touched up. It, they're going to look so much better. So that's exciting. We're going to figure out what we can do around here, and it's going to be good. I, I really do. I, I, I've i said that, like, I'm, I'm apprehensive to take, like, I don't know, customers, re-ups and, and face-ups and whatever for Barbie because, like, I, I feel very knowledgeable in maybe why a restoration is done well or done poorly, but I'm, I'm still really fine-tuning my agility in that and the motor skills to do it properly. Like, it's, it's a little bit almost like being able to either hear and understand a language or speak it, but maybe not both, that you're not fluent in. It's a little bit like that. So I, I'm, still, I'm still refining that, but I think given the opportunity to have, you know, so many of the dolls in the shop that might be due for a re-up of some kind hopefully it'll be <laughs> good practice yeah. well and just to cap just to piggyback on that it's a very it's it, when you do it it is a very personal choice i personally for my antique dolls and and dolls that i would collect i would want them to have the original finish even if the face wasn't even there anymore but when we're talking about barbies that have no face <laughs> anymore they need they something, they need something yeah. just, just like us humans it, a little blush a little lip and a little eye on me makes me look like a like from death to the runway <laughs> i think that's exaggerated <laughs> but uh, maybe not death you know um, sometimes you feel like that just a little I mean, blush it's it was what sparked my love of makeup artistry 10 years ago like i i was a makeup artist for a long time and was always so fascinated by and, and driven by the transformation that someone can go through the you know undertaking that is fun in its own right but the payoff of the difference it makes is i think really profound i think there's a certain sort of limitation that people feel confined to with their own natural features and the minute you realize maybe more with more understanding how your face responds to light and being lit and being shaded and like you actually have power to manipulate those things it, it really changes the game and it changed the game for me and anyway ramble ramble i i really really i love makeup and it's so fun to do it on dolls i mean the the scale is so different so it changes the stakes of things you know exaggerating shape more than you mean to is much more possible because you you just need to have a better control over you know muscle memory and whatever so i'm that's the skill i'm still trying to fine tune but anyway in the meantime this is a very fun other thing to fine tune that uh, i'm enjoying very much I, I i this is not at all my usual realm but learning is very fun. <laughs> it is. And and we're in it together. We're we're seriously in it together. And I'm I'm very busy and it's really fun to see people thrive and to just try and grow. And so Christopher over here doing his thing and, and like pop in and there's a a, a Jameau that didn't have a, her hand attached and was completely dirty and now she looks clean and ready to go. Like, it feels good. So, you know, congratulations for yeah. just jumping in and trying. Thanks, yeah. yeah, it's good. So we're gonna go and do some more boxes, but you can probably tell a little bit that it is better. The amount we've taken out is just crazy. We still have a lot, but we're, we're doing it. We're doing it. We have to, we, of course, sell it on the next go around, but creating space feels so, so, so good. All right, I'm getting to the bottom of this. I am going to wash these packing blankets, but now that I'm under here, this is full. Lots of wonderful, wonderful things. I, I love all of these things. I am very excited to see them again. I haven't seen them. Look, there's a brew body. Two brew bodies. Oh my gosh. Let's, let's check this out. Let's see what's going on. I gotta get the key. I gotta get the key. I wonder what's in that shoebox right there. Look at that. Brew Brevete and a Brujun body for a black doll. Wow. That is really rare. So let's see what is in this box right here. All right, comment if you want to see what's in this shoebox. I do. Let's see what it is. 
Oh my gosh, look at this tiny little brew body. The black arms, look at that. So rare. I wish we had the head. I'd put that together. Our wonderful black brujean up front from mom's collection is one of our treasures. Look at this. Fashion, not Jamo. This is Sally. Thank you for your notes. We're excited for when you come back to Denver and can write notes on everything for us and teach us everything. These are Sally's old notes. Wow. Yeah, so let's see what's in this. Let's see what's in the shoe box. More doll parts. Lots of doll parts. Doll parts are tough. I get emails about doll parts, but again, it's like, it would take me half a day to find it, and then it's so hard. We'll probably be selling a lot of the doll parts in lots, where you can buy a lot of doll parts at once. This hasn't been touched in, I don't know, the last time we even saw the top of this glass was a long time ago with Linda. Scrap fabric, okay. This is a theater, I think, or something. It's a theater. But anyway, all right, we'll let you know the next Thing that happens. Good morning. We're back on day three of the great doll shop declutter. And we're going to be working again in all these spaces and what we're doing over here. But we have this, we have a brew here that gets a lot of questions. And let me just say right, right off the bat, she has damage and we're going to make her look pretty and keep her in our doll click case because she is one that would be perfect to keep because of that. Uh, she, when I bought her, I didn't realize how badly her face was damaged. And once we get this wig off that Christopher's working on and get inside the head, we're going to see the extent of what kind of cracking and what was there. But basically the whole side of her face was damaged and repainted. So we're going to go over to Christopher in the antique department. Good Hello. morning. <laughs> Good morning. This is so fun. So the first thing we need to do is soak off the wig. I know. I, I really, you guys, I tried. I did my best with this. I actually, <laughs> you wouldn't know it, but several months ago, I took a curl to this and it's just yeah it's it's too much hair it's it's far too much hair it's almost like it is too big it isn't actually yeah. but like it's just it's too big for her so i'm gonna get rid of it and uh, see what a, another more appropriate option would look like yeah we have some beautiful wigs she needs to just be in an appropriate antique wig i think a different color would be nice for her i agree i think this is too warm i i like to try to match you know, brow colors if I can. And I just think like something she could even get away with like a really cool toned, almost like a grayish blonde color. You could do something much, much cooler, but there's a lot of red, very nice, pretty red in this hair that just doesn't quite suit her. So yeah, I think a different color would be better for sure. She's a wonderful doll. If she didn't have all this damage, she'd be I don't know, probably fifteen thousand dollars, but because she she's got and and we'll show here. I'm gonna you're gonna see it a little bit better, but you can see the the repair on the head. Now, once we get this wig off, we're gonna shine a light on the inside and we're gonna see just where it was cracked. Because I'm seeing a lot of what is called overspray, which is where they they sprayed it. The repair is not beautifully done. Look, look, you can see the eyebrow. Yeah, it just the, it looks, the lashes. It looks really textured. Yeah. But from a distance, she's going to look great, and she deserves to have... I can't stand her like this anymore. She deserves to have... I know, I agree. Yeah. She's been sitting here sad like this, watching everyone else get fixed and dressed and put yes. away. And it's your time has come. Your, her time has come. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to soak off the wig. We're going to see what's going on there. We're going to get her a new wig. And then we are not sewers, but hopefully Christopher's going to learn how to sew at some point. I'm a very, 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 very amateur sewer. Um, I have I have, I have a sewing machine that has about an inch thick of dust on it that I have used and I'm very yeah. not good with. But but I think you can do some slight alterations. I think so. Well, and I'm surrounded by gorgeous Singer machines that I would like to know how to use yes. better. So. Well, there's the one Linda used. It's, yeah, we have it covered up so it doesn't get too much dust, but that one uh, worked like a champ. Gorge. And then this one right here worked like a champ too. They both work great. But I'm maybe, sure everyone at yeah. home that is sewing is just like curling These, up and dying because I'm like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing and everyone, you know, they can and see. And we're working on brews over buttons. here. Uh, <laughs> no, don't remind me. Christopher, don't. I mean, I'm not ashamed and you shouldn't be ashamed either. This is real life. This is where we are. This is where we are in our journey right now. And I think we're doing fantastic. I am just thankful to have somebody here to be doing this with me. Paul's over in the back room cleaning. Like, thank, thank you. I'm so glad that we have our team here. If I was shuffling around here by myself and with my hair and curlers and I had a cigarette and a coffee at 9 a.m. Like As if you smoke. <laughs> I, I know. I never smoked I, a cigarette. In I don't life, smoke, but but if I but if I I mean if I was here by myself I probably would. Take it from someone who yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> You're not a smoker. Yeah, but if but if I was if I was shuffling around here I I, I just might. But anyway, we're gonna get this off. 
I'm hoping because in our case, in our storage right here, we have, Christopher, this is where we stored the good clothes and this yeah. is where we have the fashion clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is medium and clothes, large clothes. And then we also have good, better, and best. So like this, we'll have to try it on, but yeah. all you have to do is pull it out. Yeah, at, at this point, I know one thing, yeah. I may not be able to sew, but one thing I am good at is dressing dolls. Exactly. So I'll see So this, oh, about. look, it's a mullet skirt. Cute. So that, we, <laughs> that color palette on her would be so nice, actually. I don't know if that's quite the right size, but we can find out. Right. I think it's a little small. Yeah, I, I think so. But that's all you gotta do. You just hold it up to it and you see, sometimes we have to do some alterations at the skirt. <clears> sometimes <throat> we have to bring it out a little bit. That's always my, my, my actual reservation is doing that when I am not confident. Rather, I don't know that that garment wouldn't already be perfectly suited for a different future doll. So yeah. doing alterations spooks me in that way. Because like, what if I'm killing the opportunity for someone else to have like a perfectly tailored custom garment that I'm then robbing them of? I don't know, maybe I'm thinking well, too much into this. You might be thinking a little too much into it because we're not destroying the garment and sometimes you just gotta do that because otherwise they are just sitting in boxes. I suppose that's true. Yeah. And we've got lots of books where we can see how they should be dressed, but we got this. Which she's going to look beautiful. I actually, like I said last last clip, my levels of intimidation wonderfully, gratefully are changing. Like I, I respect this in a way that has not changed, but I'm not afraid of it in a way that I used to be. Yeah. And maybe that's my hubris. Maybe that's me being arrogant. But I no, you just get used to it. More like a, an exciting challenge and less like my life being on the line. Yeah, and it, that's a good tip because, and, and take this as some inspiration for yourself, the more that you try, the more you get used to it. So when I see an antique doll, and if I'm around people that are not used to them, and I take off the wig, and I'm looking in the head, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and they're like, <gasps> and I'm like, no, the doll's fine. It's sure. fine. You you have to be careful, but it you can. You can do these things. So we're grateful you're along with us. I know there's a lot of people that are very seasoned at what they're doing that are watching, but hey, I know you can appreciate us here in our doll shop making the best of life and, and working on Bruce. So we're going to go back to our decluttering over here and we'll keep checking in, but... We appreciate you tuning in with us. Hey everybody, we're back again. I guess I don't need to say that for every clip because this is like a really long vlog, but yay, success. We yeah. got, oh my gosh, I've, she looks so much better without that hair. I've gotten rid of the way, I know. Already she looks <laughs> so, bald, so better. All bald, I like her better. I mean, there's there's a lot to do here. Like there's still, there's a lot to do here. Yeah. But somebody used like rubber cement and a prayer to keep that on. It was, it was yeah. really like, really intense. So after, I don't know, three hours probably yep. of soaking is what... We finally soaked got it off. This. And actually, the towel alone wasn't even enough. I needed to go back and, like, mist with a spritz bottle underneath the hairline of that, like, as much as I could. Anyway, ramble, ramble. I was able to get that off. I've been reinforcing this 115, 120-year-old yes. silk. Mm -hmm. So we've got, I think this piece is finally secure now. I've just got one little bit left, but all these little holes I've been able to re restabilize. So that's very exciting. I thought that glue, I don't know, the gluing this would be both more complicated and even more harmful maybe to the garment, challenging to do, clumsy, whatever, than it actually was. So that's reassuring. <laughs> Our battery died, so I just put a new battery in, but I, it's so funny because some people just came in and I was just joking with Paul and he did a real good job talking with them, but th they saw that at the front of our building, our original paint says turn of the century antiques, which we are turn of the century. We're turn of the old century. We're turn of the new century. We, we do it all here. We really do. But anyway, he said, so they like looked around and they were like, the music was starting like doo 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 and they're like you just do dolls here and paul said yep we just do dolls we transitioned to dolls a few years ago which it was way longer than that and they did an about face and left and i was joking with paul because if any of us walked into a shop and they're like it's this huge place and we only do dolls we'd be on the phone canceling our plans for the rest of the day Right? Am I right? But anyway, they left all quick. But let's go back to what Christopher was doing with the stabilization. Hi. <laughs> this is an original video that we showed with Linda back when I worked at Ruby Lane. And I can put the, the link to the video, but all she does is with a toothpick, gets in there real small and we use great glue or you can get amazing glue. I think it's amazing glue that they have now. 
through the Doll Artisan Guild website and they come with a, you can get it with a little applicator if you want, but what Linda does, and I just showed Christopher the video and here he goes. You just do it just like that. It's been really, this is, this is rapidly becoming a very new, exciting favorite part of my job. The it's, week after the grace box is going to be your favorite week of the month. <laughs> if we can keep any sort of momentum around this, absolutely. I am I am only so acquainted with this glue as I've been using it for lash applications. I did it on Grace ages ago, and then I used it for Farah recently, and it, it it's very intuitive. It's it's a little bit different with fabric, but as long as you're as as most adhesives are, giving it some time to become tacky, then it will also still give you. A little bit of time to finagle with. It's really interesting seeing what other like tools it sticks to. So like fingers tend to be a good one where like wood it may get more stuck to. Anyway, this is this is me sort of like learning and having fun with you know archival hundred plus year old silk. You know, <laughs> just just learning. Um, what a fun part of your job. I'm like, okay, I need you to restore this 130 year old outfit. See you in an hour. Right. <laughs> it's, it's he's doing great it's incredibly time consuming it is uh, but i i really do i would describe myself as sort of thriving with projects like this i enjoy becoming sort of like hyper fixated on a project and seeing that through to completion i do multitask well but i i tend to enjoy very highly detail oriented things jobs tasks whatever more so than i don't know something that would require less of that <laughs> as a bad example and so this has been this has been very very exciting. Again, I was intimidated by this more so and differently than I am maybe right in this moment. I've had several espresso shots, so maybe it's you know a different kind of liquid courage. But it's it's very very fun, and I finally got rid of that. I don't know if we kept the last clip or not, but I finally got rid of that wig, that giant mop on the brew. And that's very exciting. She looks already so much better. I love her. Like, she could just have a short hair and she could be dressed with a turban. And and she looks so much better. Just yeah. her little turban, terry cloth hat right now <laughs> looks so much better right, fresh than the, the wig. Bath or something. Yeah. yeah. She, it's actually not pinned on, so if I move her, it'll all come off. But that giant mop, the, the Muppet you see there, used to be glued yeah. onto her head. And they used... They used, like, concrete to keep it on. So I'm glad to have that off. That feel, feels much better already. Yep. And I have a whole museum of, of wigs to go through that I can sort of... Yeah, we're going to use our very best wigs. We'll hopefully find one. It'd be wonderful to find one that's made out of the goat hair or something like that. It would be mm -hmm. great, but definitely mohair or human hair maybe. But Yeah. Now, this dress is worth restoring, so I wouldn't have Christopher... We we couldn't be doing this on just like any old dress, but this is no. a very special dress on a wonderful doll and it's worth the, the investment. I mean, it's two underskirts and then an overskirt and a second layer of that. It's, it's a really elaborate, breathtaking garment. And so I'm very excited to work on it. It's, it's, it's very exciting, but like all of this stuff, realistically, it, it should have a panel beneath it to adhere to or be in reinforced to. It's going to be almost, I think, too delicate to try to stick to itself. But the really big parts, I like this whole thing here, I've already sort yeah. of secured. And I think that that will help give us at least something because beneath this is another panel of the same color and fabric. So if you can get the worst of it together, I think, you know, some of this little bit stuff in the middle will be less obvious when it's over Totally. A second tier, and I think all these other little holes that I was able to secure make it feel more like one small rip rather than several all over the place. Well, and also we can reinforce it, so we can go look for a piece yeah. of fabric to put behind this. Yeah, just that's hand true. sew it on there, and then you can, and then it'll. I it'll can I can adhere that to yeah. this, and then give it something to sort of stick to. It's it's a breathtaking garment. I mean this this skirt is just beyond and this was this actually is not her dress this is a somebody else's she's over here and another thing that christopher is going to do which i've shown him and we've shown you is we're going to take off this ugly old tape that's on her little patches right here you use kid leather gloves and all you do is you cut a, a piece that you need that's big enough and then you put in a, a nice thin layer of you can use great glue or amazing glue we usually use I think it's I think it's amazing glue that we have right now. There's a leather glue over there. There's a, it's a more flexible glue than this is. 
that I was using. It actually, it might be this. Oh, this is, is this grip? This is grip. Okay, so I'll show you guys this. I, I don't, I can't find this. This is hard to find. I found two bottles on Etsy a long time ago. This might be one of those. This is hard to find, but if you can find it, great. If not, you will want to use something else. But if you can find grip, go for it, especially if, because it's hard to find. But when you find these gloves at estate sales and stuff like that, you can buy them and use them for your doll repairs. You just get one that's that sort of matches as much as you can, and then you cut a piece and, and glue it on. It looks much better than old yellow tape. But this is a beautiful portrait Jamo that is just wonderful. I'm very happy to have her. She's gonna go up in our museum case and we're gonna be doing a video showing you all the new dolls that we've added to our museum, which are just lovely and wonderful. So what does this say, value? I think it says either 900 or 500. Can't quite tell, but it's three numbers. It's, a, it's more than that these days, that's for sure. It says French, probably Jumeau. If you're watching this and you've got antique dolls, put notes on them. Look how it's just attached with a little price tag, but put notes on them. It's, it's very important and it helps everyone that will be handling or looking at the doll in the future. Hopefully the doll leaves, lives many, many lives after you go to heaven. And notes are always very, very helpful. So I just heard the door go off. Paul's doing a good job jumping to the front. Christopher found this hat, which looks very cute with the rest of her dress, but I can't wait to see her, her final look. This was supposed to be, this whole video is about us reorganizing, but this is also happening while we're reorganizing. And this came to fruition because we're cleaning out space so we can actually work. So that's a good thing. Fun. Fun. Good morning. I don't know why I say good morning because you could be watching this at at 10 o'clock at night, but it's morning for us. We are on day four of the great doll shop declutter uh, and it's Friday in our world. And how's it, hey Christopher, were you excited oh. to, to get to work to continue your conservation? That was a mouthful. Yeah, it, yeah lots of consonants. I am, I'm, I'm excited to see how this is going to come together, but I'm multitasking about, I don't know, like 15 other projects. Yes. That's an exaggeration, but there are other several. So one of those being we're, we're going to inspect, investigate just how extensive the damage is on our little lady over here. I took her into the lamp just a moment ago and I didn't see a whole lot, but like, look, th there are new things. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Her, right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll just turn this around real quick. And we are filming on a GoPro, so we're not going to get quite as the crisp thing as our, our big camera. But let's see here. So if she was perfect, this side would match the other side where right. you don't see all the extra plaster and everything. But as we go along right here, this is where you can really see, hopefully, is it sh kind of showing up the contrast? Where you can see, see what we're looking through is through the bisque. Yeah. It's where you can really see the, the overspray and all of the repairs that have been done in there. But you're not really able to see any of the cracks because the plaster is so thick. Right, like yeah, it's and so the paint. opaque coming through that like yeah. you can't see. Yeah, sometimes you can. Like I can see it. I don't know if the camera's gonna get it, but see, look at over the nose. I know, I saw that little hairline just a second ago. I yeah. hadn't noticed that before. I didn't notice that before either. And that's because we cleaned her and we can now see it. Yeah. Because I've been looking at this doll for, gosh, we've had her sitting here for months and I never noticed that. And I looked at her pretty well when we got her. Yeah. But now that she's, and we, we still have to do some clean in here. We can get a lot of this, a lot of this glue can also just come off by soaking it. Yeah. And you can, it gets kind of soft and you can kind of get it off. I was hoping that you could really see where, but here's where we can just go in. So you can see it's Actually, been repaired. Bit, right. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes no light on top is easier to see. But hopefully with the GoPro, you can see all this extra plaster that's been added way up here. So she probably had a break that started right here and went all the way up here and then followed right over her nose. And then it Poor looks thing. like it, it ended right at that eye right there. So She's it was just really like, been through it. yep, she has been through it. So that's why this doll is going to be just such a great one to live here at the shop. On camera and in the photo, she uh, we've received a lot of questions about her because she looks great. Mm -hmm. But once we get the wig and her an outfit for her and her body looks really nice. Yeah, body Look looks great. Hands. They're beautiful. This video is titled our, the, the Great Doll Shop Declutter and we have been decluttering, but I am really enjoying also showing you this side of our life and our business here and, and the things that we do. And just, just the art of rescuing a doll, I think is so beautiful. 
this doll deserves more and she's been sitting here and she's lived so many lives and so I'm just it makes me really happy I just feel really really good about what we're doing so we're going to continue our video and Christopher's going to continue what he's doing back here and then we're also going to continue with the doll shop declutter and clean the floors and then this video has to end because it is air uh, airing next week when you're watching it right now so we're going to get as much done as we can but it's not going to be complete but a job in a doll shop is never complete every day it's different we could have stuff coming in today that we didn't know we're gonna come in at the, the start of the day so that's that's part of the fun about having a career in dolls is because actually every day is different it's never the same and so it's been a beautiful journey so we're gonna let these girls continue her journey I'm gonna go ship with Paul and then we're gonna do some organizing so Hope you enjoyed seeing her. Okay, we're back with the great doll shop cleanup and I was just joking with Christopher that it's turned into the Jameau cleanup. I'm gonna squeeze past you, Christopher, and turn off this fan for a second so everyone can hear us. Oh, that's good. So we have another video that's airing later this month where we show how to clean doll clothes, which I'm so excited about. We haven't shown in a very long time, but we are steaming. <laughs> we're improvising. Yeah. Now. But it's actually, although the, the gust can be kind of violent, it is working pretty well. I've got, I was afraid at first that the, although the glue is permanent, that water would break that down. But this actually is all, despite giving it a little bit of steam, is, is all still really nice and strong. So that's exciting. I was able to reinforce a lot of these panels. And actually this is the, you'll see when we reassemble the whole garment together but this is actually the the topmost layer of the skirt so the the sort of transparent pieces will still sit over another layer of this fabric and should look more uniform just without all of the like fingers freeing off so that's my hope it looks amazing i think it looks Thanks. so good i'm really really happy with it yeah this doll deserves all of this at, at this point we've spent about a week working on her but she's yeah. worth it it's an amazing doll and this costume is incredible i think yeah i i think the the garment is really really incredible and the doll is so beautiful and to see like she still had her like original brooch like i think that's there there's so many elements of detail to this that are really fascinating so i i think it's worth really giving it some extra love and it's been really fun to in the middle of sort of reorganizing and, and giving things new homes and whatever to also be sort of unearthing treasures like this that have just been sitting idle waiting for some love and to give it to them like that's it's just been very gratifying and very very fun yeah we both we, we both have felt the same way about this because this is what if you've been with me for many years this is what i did with linda uh two days a week she came thursday Tuesday, Thursdays, and sometimes Fridays. And this is what we worked on, and it and it was just really, really great. And sometimes she would spend an entire week on a really important doll, or sometimes she would do two or three or four or five dolls in a day, depending on what they needed. But it, it is really gratifying, and I think it provides a wonderful service to you if you're just starting and you're afraid to start, because don't be afraid, just, just try it. And these kind of videos are, I feel like, are not posted that much. I was actually looking for some similar type videos because we were looking at, I was just trying to see what other types of videos were out there for conserving really, really, really old antique clothes. And I'm gonna keep looking, but I didn't see a ton. But of course I only looked for a few minutes. I'm really glad to be doing this. So we haven't, we've been actually shipping. So we haven't done a ton with the declutter, but the fact that we decluttered the last several days of this week is the result is that we have now done several videos and we are planning to do several more videos and showing what we're doing with doll repair because we made our work area more manageable. So if if you're just wanting a sign or some motivation to go in and clean up that mess that you've been looking at, we've been looking at ours for gosh, Linda retired in June of last year and it is it, and it has remained untouched. So here we are in February. And it's not our fault. Thanks to a lot of our wonderful customers, we've been just very busy. But the week after the Grace Box, there's a lull and this is perfect. So Christopher is still steaming away. I know we're not going to get them all out and we're certainly not going to iron it or anything, but no. it looks no. really good. I was I was afraid of getting anything to make physical contact with it. Like I don't want any friction and I don't want to even like 
pulling a steamer from the underside of the skirt, I think, would be really dangerous too. Yeah. So in some way, this is this is nice. You could just use a handheld steamer on the exterior of the skirt, and that would be just as well. I've actually got this pinned on top of a <laughs> Kaiser stand into a washcloth just so that I can get all the way underneath it with my hand. And uh, this has been so time consuming because the garment is incredibly fragile. I mean, if you think about like tissue paper, it's only slightly stronger than, yep. than tissue paper or like a Kleenex, really. It's stiffer than a Kleenex, but the integrity is not all that different. Yep. And if you look at it the wrong way, you can accidentally create a new tear that you have to go back then and re reestablish you know, strength, you know. It's an incredibly old garment, but we are at the same time with with all of this that we are doing and showing is we are reviving history. And that is such a beautiful thing, especially in this day and age where you just see so much waste and people throwing stuff away and discarding things and not caring about history and garments and doing this. I see a lot of that happening and we're not doing that. And it, that in itself is something I am just incredibly proud of and i know you are watching right now and you're a doll collector what no matter what type of dolls you collect i know that you appreciate legacy and history and and reviving history for you christopher i'm sure it's just an amazing thing to be a part of reviving history oh i mean i i've always had an appreciation for for fashion and outside of work like most of my own garments are vintage anything that i'm wearing for like a special occasion you know a party a wedding all of my favorite things are are vintage you know beautiful one of a kind pieces that i can't just like <laughs> replace necessarily and so learning to preserve them and wear them in a way that like i can mend them myself and and caring for them you know gingerly or affectionately is something that i'm I'm used to and I would I would prefer to do personally although this sounds I think sort of pretentious I would prefer to to try to preserve my own garments and and I mean there is like a sustainability element to that too but I I love fashion of yesteryear and ensuring that I can you know care for that lovingly myself and not necessarily go out to Forever 21 for a new yeah. pair of pants every time I need one is like I don't know it feels better and so doing something like this really is incredible for a couple reasons. One, like the scale of the project is not bite-sized, but it is accessible in a way that like a human dress would be a much bigger endeavor. This is a tremendous deal, but the scale of it feels like a an approachable size. And then also to be able to preserve something like this is so rare and so very exciting. I appreciate dolls, I appreciate fashion, and this has been a really, really riveting sort of new chapter of my my job at the doll shop. Yeah, it has been really fun. For me, it, for me, for Christopher, it's riveting and fun and exciting because it's new to him, but for me, it, it feels so nostalgic and just, it, it feels so good. It's bringing back so many memories because we have been doing this here at our doll shop since the beginning of time, and I have been filming YouTube videos with Linda doing this going back I was looking back at the Ruby Lane ones and it goes back like eight years and even when I was filming with Lucy before Linda so it's I've learned a lot and that's fun too today was my first day of just like washing doll clothes which is not it's not hard to do but I personally never did it I just filmed Linda doing it and I just did it like I had done it a million times and it felt so good and so I've been imparting a lot of the things I know to Christopher and a lot of it is is he just picks right up it's second nature if you're into it you can it, it becomes second nature and so that's why it's really important to just try sometimes some things like if you if you didn't know an instrument some people can just pick one up and play it it just comes to them and so a lot of the times you're very naturally talented where you didn't know and you find out by trying so hopefully that provides a little inspiration too if, it, if you take away anything from this video it's the importance of cleaning your messes once they've gotten a little out of control because something beautiful can come of that space we'd never we, none of this would be happening if we didn't clean this space and we didn't have the time and capacity to be even started starting a new project because it, it was so chaotic here that we we wouldn't even start a new project so that is important too okay we were filming something else so I'm not normally I would wear something a little bit so I could really get into it but I'm cleaning and it, this isn't even that bad it has been we've had corners of the shop especially when we did our first 
clean out in 2020 that I would never show on television. But just to show you what our floors look like. There's a little plastic thing. And here's what I'm doing. I'm just using some Myers Clean Day, putting it down, using a scrub brush. And then I'm gonna scrub all this and then take one of our little terry cloths and clean it up. So I just can't, I can't stand floors like this. So much better. Already gonna do the rest of it. Hand doing the floors is the way to go, especially when they're pretty bad because you can really just get into that grit and grime. And take to the, the hair department, which is in our kitchen. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, Christopher, if you wanna start, this if you wanna keep, just kidding. if you wanna keep doing these doll restorations, you gotta, you gotta get harder. You can't tell me that's not crazy. It, okay, so what we used this was- This looks like gasoline. Yeah. We used uh, the heads up. So we have it in here. All we used a little bit of the a shampoo. So I took this much water and a drizzle of shampoo and just just started pulling this through the water. I haven't even like I would dump the, that. I would. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna keep doing it. But all I did was yeah. very gently get water coming through this. And I don't know if this has ever been cleaned. I don't know the last time it was. But that I've never seen like bath it's hair. It's so water. satisfying. That's, it's green. Yep. That's insane. I I want that. Like when I was cleaning well, the clothes, mine you. mine were not as bad, but I I like it because <laughs> stop. We're we're gonna we're gonna toughen you up. I'm not actually disturbed by this, but I do find that bewildering. That Do it's cleaning cleaning hundred year old dolls crazy. and wigs and clothes is not for sissies. Crazy, crazy. We need to make a T-shirt for that. Did anyone? Does anyone on the internet know about the tarantula? No. Okay. We're we're gonna keep that one a secret. Okay. Well, there's a tarantula. <laughs> It's the end of the day. We did not get any of the things done over here. I cleaned a little bit of the floor, as you saw, but we have a lot more to do. So this is going to be kind of a to be continued video because it's always gonna be in, in a process. But Christopher did get a lot done with the conservation of the Portrait Jumeau's costume, which he secured some of these buttons. And uh, what did you, what else did you do to the jacket? Yeah, so this, we we restabilized all of these pieces and all of we did some button strengthening the buttons are acorns aren't those that. incredible they're amazing they're little satin <laughs> lined covered acorns beautiful detail on this i mean just incredible oh and don't the, forget her hanky yeah i was gonna say the pocket on this side has a little handkerchief in it it's, oh there it is okay yeah, so cute so lots lots of little tiny fine line work for just keeping everything intact. We resecured some buttons and did some some lining here. I mean, there's only so much that you can do with a piece this old, but also this had other restorations that somebody else had done as well. So, trying to merge everything that has already existed and, you know, maybe needed some extra TLC. That was a fun little little restoration here, and then we've got very little that actually needs to happen with this. I reinforced the waistband with just a little bit more of that amazing glue because all of this was sort of fraying off and we just tacked that back down and then all i did for this because it really didn't need any any help otherwise that's in really remarkable shape i actually took a really soft bristle paintbrush which of course now i can't find oh i think it was by the ironing it made such a difference because this was covered in dust it had like, all kinds yeah. of like sawdust and attic dust and whatever what I wanted to avoid was scrubbing fibers, or rather scrubbing dirt particles into the fiber and therefore weakening that more later. So rather than like really scrubbing that into the to the fabric, kind of trying to pick it up and lift it off as I go. But all of these seams were really sort of dusty and dirty. And all I did was just sort of flick and peck that out. And then after that's mostly gone, you can go back and sort of just sweep over it <clears throat> as a way to sort of dry clean, if, you know, as, as a means of dry cleaning, I suppose. It's in otherwise really phenomenal shape. I just didn't want to risk any, any friction or pulling or, you know, harm to this at all. Um, this seems like it's in otherwise really remarkable, ready to wear shape. So by the time we get undergarments and then the final top layer of the skirt all assembled, you'll see the finished product for our beautiful Portrait Jumeau in our garment cleaning video because yeah. I still have to finish those. <laughs> yes, yes, we were doing a double take and we've been just so busy all day and it's already the end of the day. So that's why we have to wrap up the video. I have to go pick up Holland Dayton. So you're gonna see the final, the final reveal 
on our wash day video which is coming up so again check our schedule and you'll see all the fun so what a great week i know it's been a lot of fun i'm very proud of the fun new things that i've learned and been able to execute and practice and she's so beautiful so it, it's really a very exciting privilege to, to do something like this I, I always sort of envied the knowledge that my work predecessors had that I could not access and I really admire so many of the of the doll artists and doll restorationists that you know have been here and have not been here and whatever and getting to access them even through the channel's old videos is so helpful so I hope what I can supplement is is useful to you but really the good juicy stuff is years old and has nothing to do with me so please go watch the videos that Linda has put up she's such an asset to myself and anyone else that's doing this and I just feel very grateful that I, I, I have access to that but my my doing it's been very very fun and I hope that we can get a nice slow drip steady influx of like one really exciting fun restoration project like every I don't know second or third month would be really fun because I think that's about as much time as we have to throw another new thing into the routine there are other things in our ordinary schedule that you don't know about that are coming so we have lots of projects we're juggling and taking on one more feels both spooky and exciting and yeah. I'm having fun yeah. yeah yeah thank you so much Christopher yeah both, both spooky and exciting but this was a great week we were able to tackle so much because I was looking at our schedule on Monday and thinking what are we gonna do this week and well, we figured it out. Yeah, There's the, always something to do. That's the thing, is the minute you ask, <laughs> it presents itself. There's always something to do around here. Yeah, there's always something to do in a doll shop, for sure. The, the job is never done. So thank you for joining on our great doll shop declutter. This was super <laughs> fun, and also our restoration. If you enjoyed this type of content, please let us know. That, that feedback is very important when we get the comments and we get the feedback from you. That makes us want to do more. So if you're watching and you enjoyed it, please let us know. We appreciate you so very much. And thank you to Paul, who's on the other side, diligently packing, packing, packing. He's doing so great. Thank you, Paul. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.